<laughs> in one day. It was the afternoon performance, two or three, three o'clock in the afternoon, to show you how wheels can grind. The Fifth Army General's Command cut papers overnight, overnight. One o'clock the next day, guy comes in, reads the riot act on me, tells me I got 30 days to get my life in order, report to California, and sit there and wait on a, a ship or sit there and wait on an airplane to take me to the 4th Infantry Division. And in, I say, where's Play Cool? In the central highlands of North Vietnam. And so first thing I thought, I said, let me review my contract. Because I said, 4th Infantry Division, you can never beat the government. You can beat them, it takes a long time, but it's very difficult. Say, I went to the 4th Infantry Band, but what's the first word? Infantry Band. Infantry Surgeon. Infantry Cook. Anytime they get ready, infantry. See? It's like a card game like that. <laughs> Play your horn today. Say, get out there tomorrow. Did you see combat? I could, constantly. You were there during the Tet Offensive? Two. Two offensives. Two. I got... I got blown up in the first one, in the Jeep. I injured. got injured in the first one, yeah, in the Jeep. Mm -hmm. What did you um, take away from that experience? Oh, wow. Um, so much. First of all, I got rid of religion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and found out what spirituality is. And I heard a lot of fantastic music and made some great, met some great musicians and I ended up seeing another part of the world, both Vietnam, Hong Kong, and where else I stopped? Someplace else. It's just, you know, it's, uh, that's, that's something you could never put in a little nutshell, I mean, you know, it was, that was a like life and death type of experience that exists on an everyday basis, you know? And like you said, people always say, you see combat, what do you mean, you know? That probably was the last war that was closest to the classical idea of combat in terms of this force meet this force but it didn't exist that way ex except at a certain times because there was a new game plan. The Vietnamese had another game plan that the Americans weren't prepared for, you know. Guerrilla warfare and terrorism, real sophisticated terrorism, I mean really sophisticated terrorism. What we're calling terrorism right now is more like gang thuggery, very unsophisticated, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, psychological, you know. Sit, let nothing happen. First of all, cause, cause an accident. Like, an accident means to focus on something, for something to be focused on, to cause something to be focused on. So there's a heightened sense about something, they create a, a heightened sense and, not, and then let it just go on and on and on and nothing happens except for this heightened sense. Just when you're about ready to look away, something happens, boom. And then nothing else happens and then it comes back exactly at the same time, like it was on a new moon, it comes back on a new moon. And then it never happens again. This is what I call terrorism. Because this is all mathematics and sense of mental mood 
you know, that they were playing with, you know. Not just a whole lot of little ground trickery, you know, putting things in the ground. Mm -mm. They were playing the long game, too. Yeah. So to come away from that, it's, uh, you know, it was like, it wasn't pleasant because, like, you know, to see mankind at the lowest level, because that was the first time. I mean, I grew up in Chicago. I mean, kids now, they, they have guns and do all kind of crazy stuff, you know. Weapons, I mean, you know, was it, you know. They said, this is sad, you know. Um, I mean, uh, among the Americans themselves, you know, everything got resolved, you know, like, the, the great thing I would say, the greatest thing that happened as far as I concerned as far as the Vietnam War was the relationship between blacks and whites. That got solved in the, wild, in the Wild West way, come out in the street. What went on in World War II and the Korean War between blacks and white, that stopped, you know, Vietnam War. That stopped dead. Mm. That was like, you want to do it? Let's do it. The brothers stopped it <laughs> cold, believe me, cold. Yeah, and for the best, because the comradeship between blacks and white was for real. They didn't have it before. And that was the only place they had it, except people that was marching for things in this country together, but not, that's different than being under this threat of death on a daily basis, you understand? Life and death. Yeah. Um, so you returned to Chicago a changed man. Of course. And things had changed in Chicago. Yeah, in this country it had changed. Um, so the AACM is up and running at that point. Right, and that was a and haven you, for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then within a year or so, mm -hmm. okay, within a year or so, many of the AACM they people went, to, went Paris. to Paris. Right. But you chose not to go. No, because I had just gotten back. I was just... I was landing and I needed to get, I needed to get a sense of what was going on and get myself together in Chicago and get myself, get my music going. And by the time I got everything going, the, the Paris days were ending. Everybody was coming back. 